Hello, this is session number five of our video series, Expository Preaching Simplified. I'm Pastor Wagoner, and I'll be your host today and throughout all these videos. Let's get started on one that I've entitled, Open Your Eyes. And this is more of an introductory video. We'll get actually into sermon preparation as far as uh, constructing the outline and all that, uh, starting next time. But anyway, I want to take you back to something that happened a long time ago. My friend was a young man. He was perhaps uh, the youngest member of the adult Sunday school class that he taught. Yet everyone agreed that he was a wonderful Bible teacher. I was a few years older and a seminary student. He was in his first year of Bible college. Nevertheless, I marveled at his level of knowledge and ability to teach. But he had not yet acquired all the tools that he needed to be his best. Evidently, he recognized he needed some education because, well, he was in school. However, he seemed to disdain some of the basic curriculum requirements for his Bible college degree. He actually saw no reason to study the Greek language, although it is the language of the New Testament. He said to me one time, he said, I am an Englishman. Why do I need to learn Greek? He said, I speak English. I read an English Bible. I teach people who understand English. So why do I need to know Greek? He went on to argue that he could understand everything that he needed to know about the Bible by reading a good English commentary. I didn't argue with him at the time, but I did disagree. Over 40 years have elapsed since that conversation, and I disagree even more so today. What I believe was true then, I now know to be true in practice. Just as a preacher needs to have a knowledge of theology, he also needs to have a knowledge of the original languages, Hebrew and Greek. The Greek, lang the Greek language is a very precise language, and the Hebrew is a very ancient one. Both offer challenges to the modern interpreter, but both unlock a treasure trove of knowledge that simply cannot be ascertained from an English translation and most commentaries. Now, there are a lot of good commentaries, but commentaries are also notorious for skipping over the hard-to-understand things. Be it a commentary or some other type of reference book, there's just no adequate substitute for a knowledge of the original languages. Obtaining a working knowledge of Greek and Hebrew is difficult, even in the classroom setting. It is even more difficult to achieve through self-study or taking an online course. However, it is highly important to access whatever help you can get. If you can take a class or even audit one, do it by all means. Even if you're not able to pursue a degree. If you can only access online training, take advantage of it. If you have someone who can mentor you in the languages, by all means, take advantage of that. I did uh, just that with a friend many years ago who did not have the opportunity to take a Greek course and totally forgot about it. So I was speaking with him on the phone the other day and he reminded me of that and how thankful he was that I'd taken the time. Actually, we, we were in different cities. I'd actually put it on cassette tape. Well, I would also add this advice. And uh, I think this is important for those of us who are never going to be Greek or Hebrew scholars. And here's the advice. Don't fret too much about learning vocabulary. When I took Greek, huge emphasis was placed on learning 
the Greek vocabulary or, or a working vocabulary of the Greek language. Well, the thing is, you can always look up the meaning of a word. The easiest way to do that is to use uh, an interlinear text like that found on Bible Hub. I would also add the following advice, and that is this. Don't fret too much about learning vocabulary. I will, you will need to learn some basic vocabulary words. However, you can always look up the meaning of word, and that's why we have BibleHub.com on the screen here. The easiest way to look up the meaning of Greek words is simply go to BibleHub.com. And the first thing you need to do is go up here in the left-hand corner and choose your text. Uh, so let's say, I think this coming Sunday, I'm preaching on Second Thessalonians. Uh, then it'll always come up chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm preaching on chapter 2. So I'll need to select chapter 2. And my sermon begins at verse 4. So select that. So here we are. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. Now, you got all these translations here. But what you want to do is go up here to where it says I-N-T-E-R-L-I-N. It means interlinear, Greek, English. And, and uh, if you're in the Hebrew language, it'll come up uh, Hebrew interlinear. So click on that. And here's verse 4. Now, you have your Greek text here in the middle in black. You have the English word equivalent here right below it. You have the grammatical identification of each word here, like chi and is a conjunction. Uh, here's a verb, uh, means exalting himself, and is a present tense uh, verb. Uh, it's actually a participle here, and it gives you the nominative, masculine, singular, all, all that you need right here. Uh, so this is all going to be helpful. But we're talking about word definitions at the moment. So let's say, say you're talking about the word opposing. This is a participle also. You go up here to the transliteration, which is simply the Greek letters spelled out in English letters. So they won't make no sense uh, in English, but that's your transliteration. If you click on that, it takes you to the Englishman's Concordance, which gives you a list, and I chose the wrong one. I chose one that only appears one place. So let's let's go back, and let's pick a different word. Uh, let's pick uh, this word right here, which means to sit down. Okay, now you click on the transliteration. You go to the Englishman's Concordance, and it'll show you every place in the New Testament that that word appears, and it'll give you the translation, four different translations here besides or three different translations of the English underneath of the Greek. So it's helpful to know how a word's used in various contexts. But if you really want to know the lowdown on everything, you need to go up here to where it says Thayer's. Now, Thayer's is a Greek lexicon, or what we would call in English a dictionary. Click on Thayer's, and now you've got a full dictionary description and analysis of the word. You have the first... Uh, most usual meaning, the second possible meaning, and so on. And, and a lot of uh, your references are here and everything. And you have this tool, and you have a whole word study right in front of you. And so you don't need to have a, a lexicon in front of you. You don't have to be thumbed through pages. It's all right here uh, at the click of a button. Now, let's see, go back so you can see that again. Remember, it's the interlinear translation on Bible Hub. And uh, that'll be what you need to do. Now, just for a quick uh, variation, we'll go over here to an Old Testament passage. Here's 1 Samuel 1.1. 1, 1. Now you have the Hebrew. Uh, here's a Hebrew word, which is uh, the word for son right here, Ben. You can go up to the translation or the transliteration in English, you click on Ben and you get the same thing from English was in accordance. Everywhere in the Old Testament that word occurs, some uh, uh, meanings there or how it's used in translations. But now uh, Thayer's is not up here because Thayer's is a, is a Greek lexicon. So you need to go to BDB, Brown, Driver, and Briggs, which is a Hebrew lexicon. Click on that and it gives you the exact same thing you get when you use the uh, Thayer's for the New Testament, complete dictionary analysis.
Okay, so keep this in mind. It's a great tool. It's absolutely free, and uh, it's available to anybody that can use it. Okay, do not assume, though, that word meanings are all you need to know. Now, that's, that's a tremendous mistake. We need to understand words. We need to know their definition. We often refer to them in preaching, and it helps us clarify what we're talking about and helps us clarify what we're reading in the English. But the grammar is far more important. Uh, you start with a beginning Greek grammar text, uh, one that I've used most recently uh, in helping uh, someone is Basics of Biblical Greek by William Mons. Mons, Mons, M-O-U-N-C-E, Basics of Biblical Greek Grammar, William Mons. You can get that on Amazon, very reasonable. It's a really good reference. The one I used in seminary a long time ago was the beginning of Grammar of the Greek New Testament by William Hershey. That's, uh, that's still available on Amazon, a little bit more costly. Okay, so that's the beginning. That's, that's where you start. So you need to pick up something and you begin to study it if, uh, if you have no other options, of course, and, and do the same even if you're working with a class or whatever. Of course, they'll probably have their own recommendation. Once you've uh, went through that and you've got a good idea of the basics, you need to go on to an actual volume of Greek grammar. Uh, the one that I've used for years is called A Manual Grammar of the Greek New Testament. It's by Dana, D-A-N-A, and Manty, M-A-N-T-E-Y. Unfortunately, it's no longer in print, and uh, I think it's still available on Amazon, though it uh, may be quite, quite expensive. But uh, there, there are others there. You can, you can find others on Amazon as well, and I think maybe Mons even has one available. So... Understanding Greek grammar is the key. The various types of Greek verbs and their meanings, especially. We also need to learn the, the uses of nouns, and participles, infinitives, and prepositions. Having a working knowledge of the grammar is essential for accurate interpretation. Now, another reference book that is available for free online is the classic work by A. T. Robertson entitled "Word Pictures in the New Testament." And you've got to have a little basic Greek before you can use this as a reference, but once you have it, it's, it's written in English, and it's, it's extremely helpful. Uh, but you can find that. Just Google out there. It's available more than one place online, absolutely free of charge. Uh, but, but it's an indispensable tool for understanding Greek grammar and the issues of interpretation. Uh, armed with even a rudimentary knowledge of Greek grammar, you can use... Uh, an interlinear Greek text, such as I just showed you on BibleHub.com. And uh, you don't need to know all the vocabulary and spend hours and hours memorizing it. And you'll be able to easily identify Greek verb forms, participles, infinitives, and so on. And, and uh, once you've identified them, then you can use the, the grammar reference books to, to help you figure out what usage uh, goes with what in the context. So, referring to your own knowledge and utilizing helpful tools such as word pictures in the New Testament I just mentioned, a vast amount of interpretive information will be opened up to you. Now, you follow the same process for understanding biblical Hebrew. Begin with a basic grammar. And uh, the one I used years ago was Introduction to Hebrew by Moshe Greenberg. I think it is probably still available uh, used. But there'll be others that you could find as well. Just remember, the Bible wasn't written in English. The Bible was completed 1,400 plus years before the King James was translated into English. There's much to be learned about God's Word from reading and studying an English translation. However, serious expositors who access the original languages can dig deeper mine far more golden truths and deliver the exceeding riches of God's Word in a far more accurate way to their listeners. And that's what we want to do. Thank you.